Hi, I'm Charlie White. Welcome to the fourth video in my MDF painting series. In today's video, I've made a new mock-up. We've got two 18mm sheets screwed together to create a 36mm end grain of MDF on each one. And in today's video, I'm going to be pitting against each other two of the heavyweights of the MDF painting world. The shellac-based Zinza BIM Primer Sealer and the water-based MDF primer from Johnston's. Now, my last video was a pretty comprehensive run-through of all the different ways that you can treat MDF end grain. So you might ask, why am I doing another video? Well, I'll tell you. I've never used an MDF primer as such before. If you've watched my previous videos, you'll, you'll see that I tend to just go with a cheap, quick, dry wood primer undercoat. So I'm quite interested to know how the MDF primer differs from products like this. Also, since posting these videos, I've had a few people commenting that they prefer to treat the raw MDF end grain with a shellac based primer. There's quite a lot of positive coverage on YouTube on this Zinza BIN product, which is a shellac based primer. So that's why I thought it'd be really interesting today to pit these two products against each other. So before we get started, let's run a quick comparison of the two products. So firstly, Zinza BIM. So what is shellac? Well, it's a tough natural primer, sanding sealant and stain blocker, and also a high gloss varnish. And it was one of the dominant wood finishers until the 1930s, when it was largely replaced by nitrocellulose lacquer. So what do we know about this product? Well, you can apply it in really low temperatures from minus 18 to plus 32. Uh, they say it sticks to any surface without sanding. It's touch dry in 15 minutes. You can recoat after 45 minutes. And crucially, being a shellac based product, you have to clean the brushes after use with methylated spirits, which is a bit of a faff. Johnston's MDF primer, on the other hand, is a water based product. It's touch dry in 30 minutes. You can recoat it after one to two hours. So it's got a longer recoat time than the Zinza. But being a water-based product, you clean the brushes after use with warm soapy water, which is a lot easier to do than having to use methylated spirits. Right, I've got to say, I'm looking forward to seeing how these products get on against each other. To apply this layer, I'm just going to use a paintbrush as you can see, it's quite a thin consistency, this paint, which is surprising, I guess. But when you apply it to the end grain, it immediately has the hallmarks of a, of a sort of solvent-based paint, in the sense that it feels reasonably thick when you paint it on, and I'm guessing it's sinking in pretty well. purpose of this experiment I'm going to apply two coats of primer to each set of end grains. So that's the first coat of the shellac on. Now as it's got a recoat time of 45 minutes I'm just going to wrap the paintbrush in cling film to save me having to clean the brush between coats. So now it's the turn of the Johnston's dedicated MDF primer. Go ahead and give it a quick stir. First thing you notice about this is that it's much thicker and for a water-based paint I would say that's a really good consistency. So it's on with the paint. Right, I'm now going to leave those two to dry. Okay, it's about an hour and a half since I painted uh, each end grain. Let's have a look at what we've got. So this is the Zinza BIN here. And this is the Johnston's MDF primer on this side. 
Now, in terms of roughness, and you're just gonna to have to take my word for it here, I hope you can see on the video as well, I would say they are both pretty similar. You can see the end grain coming up through the surface on both pieces. Uh, I'm just zooming out a bit. The only observation I'd make, and I don't know whether this is coming out on the video, is that I think you could argue that more end grain is coming up on the Johnston's MDF primer, such that you can see the sort of brownish colour of the MDF more prominently on this one than you can on this one, particularly this point here, if you see that. So I'd say at the moment the Zinza is marginally ahead. So what I'm going to do now, I've got some 120 grade sandpaper, I'm going to wrap it around a block of wood and just to give the end grain a little bit of a sand to take off the peaks. And again, we'll see how it performs after being sanded. I'm just doing this very lightly, I don't want to take off the paint. Okay, now this is quite interesting. I can see even more of the MDF coming through on the piece that I painted with the Johnston's MDF primer than you can on the, the, the Zinza end grain. They're both equally smooth, that was the purpose of sanding them down in the way that I did, but the Zinza is still brilliantly white uh, when compared with the Johnston's, which you can see here, you've got these very clear marks where the brown of the MDF is coming through. That suggests to me that the Zinza BIN has sunk into the wood much more effectively than the Johnston's has. Okay, time for the second coat. So we're going to start with the Zinza. Now this is going on beautifully and the surface is looking really smooth. The question is, will the end grain come back up through again with a second application? It'll be interesting to see. Just going to clean the lid of this paint pot before I put it all away with these metal pots. It's these points here, which are the biggest source of bits falling into the paint and lids going rusty. So if you can make that beautifully clean and also the rim on the paint pot itself. The lid comes off easier next time and you don't get any bits falling into the paint. Okay, now it's the turn for the Johnston's MDF primer. Okay, we're going to let those dry now, we'll see what the finish is like after that. Okay, day two of this experiment. The second coats of these paints have been drying overnight, so let's take a look, see what they look like. So, this is the Zinza, this is the Johnston's. Immediate observations are that the Zinza end grain is a little bit smoother than the Johnston's. The whole thing looks slightly better sealed. I can see a little bit of brown still, hints of brown coming up through this one here, the Johnston's, whereas you can't see any of that on the Zinza. However, we're talking margins here. I mean, it's almost imperceptible, but if I had to point out a difference, that is what it would have to be. So I'm now just gonna give them a final sand with this 180 grade sandpaper. Zinza needs almost nothing at all. Right, I don't think this video would be complete if we didn't apply a final top coat to these two surfaces so that we can see what they look like. So I've got a water-based satin from Johnston's here. 
I'm using water-based rather than oil-based because you can actually apply oil or water-based to the Zinza and obviously you can to the Johnstons and it's just easier in terms of cleaning brushes and the setting time is obviously a lot quicker so hopefully I better get this video out by the end of today. I'm using a foam roller pad to apply this. Could use a paintbrush but you get a slightly better finish using the roller. Okay, that's done. I'm going to wait a couple of hours and give my final verdict on these two products. Okay, so the paint's now dry, so let's take a closer look. Right, I hope you can see this clearly. I've actually switched off my studio light so that you can see the end grain clearer, given that it's broad daylight at the moment. And this is the Zinza here, and this is the Johnstons here. I would say that the Zinza is marginally smoother, has a little bit more of a sheen to it. Johnston's feels just a little bit rougher, but if you didn't know what I painted both of these with, if I'm going to be honest with you, I think you'd probably think they were almost identical. In an ideal world, they could do with one more final coat, and then I think they'd look even smoother. So, what observations can we draw from this experiment? Well, I think you'll agree with me from watching the video that the Zinza BIN was marginally ahead at pretty much every stage in terms of uh, sinking into the wood, the end grain not coming up through it so much, and then the finished product being a little bit smoother than the Johnstons. But if I'm going to be honest with you, those differences were pretty marginal. Uh, and here's the other catch. This is obviously only a one litre tin. A two and a half litre tin of the Zinza BIN costs you £42.99 including VAT, which is a fair whack for a tin of wood primer undercoat paint. Interestingly, the Johnstons for the same quantity tin is only £26.99. And that is interesting, particularly when you think that my, what I thought was my just typical cheap Armstead quick dry wood primer undercoat which I normally use is only marginally cheaper than the MDF primer at $24.99. And if I'm going to be totally honest with you, given that these are both specialist products designed for this sort of wood, I don't think that there is a discernible difference between these edges that I've painted using these paints and the edges that I showed you in my last video which were painted with this. And there are even cheaper wood primer undercoats around, like the Leyland Trade acrylic primer undercoat that Gosford Handyman recently used in a great video that he posted a couple of weeks ago, uh, details for which you can see in the description at the end of this video. Now that paint is only £13.99, so almost half the price of your typical wood primer undercoat. Uh, and he has great results with that. And the other problem with this Zinza BIN paint is you need to use methylated spirits to clean the paint brushes which quite frankly is a bit of a pain when you think that a paint like this can simply be cleaned off the paintbrushes with warm soapy water. So I would say to you, if you've got a lot of MDF end grains that you need to paint because you're making some furniture or whatever it is, if you're not too worried about the finish and you're happy with this slightly raised grained sort of look, then a product like this or even that is going to be more than adequate. If, on the other hand, you want a completely flat, smooth finish, then take a look at the last video in this series where I showed you how to apply the MDF tape or the wood filler to the end grain. Now, this is a, slow, a much more involved process, but like everything in life, the more time you put into it, the better results you get back. And to all those people out there on the forums that say you've got to use shellac paint when, you, when you're priming MDF edges, I don't think you're right because I don't think the difference that it makes is noticeable enough to justify all the extra hassle. Sorry guys, that's just my view, borne out by this experiment. So I really hope you found today's video useful. If you've got any comments, please leave them in the comments feed below. 
Details of all the paints and the processes that I've used in today's video will be in the description at the end of the video. If you've liked today's video, please click on the like button below. And if you're new to my channel, I'd love to have you subscribe. You can do that by clicking on the link here.